think we always talking about him. <laughs> to some people, you know. It's strange that he he become the light of your life. <laughs> In other words, he ain't, he ain't what you always have done, but he's what you're doing now. Amen. 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 And it looks it looks kind of peculiar to some people. But tonight we would like to study about God's wisdom. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. yeah. From the book of uh, Proverbs, in the first chapter, <laughs> and we're gonna just we're gonna just pull. For one verse, for a text out of that, amen. But we're gonna we're gonna bounce around that chapter in a couple more verses, and we just gonna be thankful that God has granted us the ability to be standing here in His house, proclaiming His word to His people, amen. amen. From the book of Proverbs in this first chapter, amen. amen. Looking at at thirty third verse, <coughs> and in that thirty third verse we have these words: "But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil." But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and be quiet from fear of evil. Amen? From that we would like to draw safe from evil. Amen. Safe from evil. It is a Proverb that started out as a fatherly proverb with Solomon addressing his son to give his son instructions on how to get through some of the pitfalls of life or get over or by some of the pitfalls of life. Amen? Amen. He, he, he administered what everybody would minister to somebody that they love and that they care about. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. In other words, they want them to have a surety that in their life, whatever they're doing is going to be satisfying in the will of God. Amen? Amen. You can get anybody to back you up when you're in the world. They'll, they'll back you up. You can be out in the world doing anything. Somebody's going to give you an amen or go ahead. Amen? Amen. But when real love is applied, when, 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 you find the character of a father that, that cares about his child, he's going to give him good and proper instructions. Some that are not going to cause the weight of the world to fall upon him. Amen? Amen. The, 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 the purpose of this proverb was to know wisdom. <laughs> In other words, you ought to have acquaintance with it. Now, you know, it's a lot of other things in the world to know, amen? amen. But they don't have nothing to do with wisdom. Say so. Amen? amen? But the purpose of this proverb is to know wisdom and instruction. Mm -hmm. See, if you can't listen to nobody, can't nobody tell you nothing, you won't find yourself unwise, amen? Amen. The, the writer or, or lays it out, and he lays it out, in perspective, that wisdom is going to be tied up in instructions to perceive the words of understanding. Now, all, all, all these conjunctions that's coming together mm -hmm. is to have you in a state of mind or state of being where you'll know when you are right and you'll know when you're wrong. All right, right. now. Come on. Without this understanding that Solomon is passing out, you, you know, you know who Solomon is, amen. Mm -hmm. Solomon was the man that God opened up the heavens to, amen. So he said, You can ask me whatever you want to ask of me, and guess what? I'm gonna grant it to you. But this young man, you can call him a boy if you will, <laughs> he 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 had good understanding, amen. 
Now look, God, if you're going to put me in a position where I got to discern over my brothers and my sisters and my kindreds, if I got to be the one to pass judgment over them, I just want to do it in the right way, Lord. Say so. Huh? Mm -hmm. Give me uh, the wisdom and the understanding to judge righteously among my sisters and my brothers and among my kids. Just give me the thing. Well, I'll be doing what's right, Lord. That's, that's what Solomon's quest was, to do what was right. Yes, sir. And he even astonished God with his answer. Say so. Just imagine if was laid out before you tonight. Just ask me anything that you will, and I'll grant it unto you. I can see your mind bubbling like a pot of water right now. <laughs> Trying to figure out what, how I'm going to get this thing over for me. But Solomon, in, in, in his array and all that he had, he was thinking on doing the will of God in the proper manner. That, 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 that's what all should be in our hearts. Yep, Above all and in everything is doing the will of God, knowing that God is going to be pleased with what's coming from my lips and what's coming from my heart, what's coming from my hands, where my feet are going, that is going to be pleasing unto God. So as he said, he said to him, receive the instructions of wisdom. This is what you need to be receiving. This is what you need to be taking on, the instruction of wisdom, justice, and, and judgment, and, and, and equality. You, you want to be able to balance out whatever you're doing. You don't want nobody to say that you're too heavy-handed, you're too soft-handed, or you're overbearing. You want to be able to measure what is meat to your brothers and your sisters. Amen? Amen. And this is what Solomon was concerned about when God opened up his heaven to him. He was concerned about making sure that everybody was treated fairly. Amen? Amen. Now, now you know, we live in a world now where fair don't have nothing to do with it. I learned as, as a young man, I used to say it's hard, but it's fair. And then when I realized that, that, that some of the, the, the weights and balances that were being played we had nothing to do with fair. They were definitely hard, but they didn't have nothing to do with fair because some people had not considered the wisdom of God in their judgment and what they did and what they were doing. But tonight, as we, we approach a new year, we need to be sound in judgment, sound in wisdom, sound in understanding, knowing what the will of the Lord is. Mm -hmm. Now, now, I know you got a lot of wills, you know, but let's cast them aside in this new year. Yeah. Whatever your will is. Jesus put his will aside, amen? Amen. Jesus said, I come to do my Father's will. And that's what God is asking for you, to have a transformation of your mind. Change your mind when you know what's going to please you and your select group. Cast that aside for what's going to please God and the whole universe. Amen? Amen. Amen? And this is what going to make God's people a peculiar people. Because you're going to find out that they're going to have the love of God in their heart. You notice I use the phrase the love of God. Because we got some stuff we call love that's destroying whole families. Amen. Killing men and women every day. We call it love. Amen? But if I got to love you and I got to hate him to make it work, that ain't no love, my brothers and my sisters. Say it, say it. Say it now. If I got to be mean to somebody else for to make you happy, that ain't got nothing to do with love, amen? Amen. Come on. So, so when, when, we, when we get our understanding rolling, you might, so, you might say, once we get our understanding functioning, that we'll know what God, now you got to go into God's word and study God's word. Ask God for wisdom and understanding. Any man that wants wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth liberally and upbraideth not. Amen? He ain't going to hold nothing back from you when he know your heart is where it's supposed to be. Amen? Amen. Did this boy Solomon harbor where it was and God said, look, say, you didn't ask me for money, but I'm going to give you that. <laughs> you, you didn't ask me for, for land and houses. I'm going to give you everything that 
you didn't ask me and what you asked me for too. Because you could have, say, I want you to kill my enemies. You could have asked me for riches. You could have asked me for all that stuff. And because I laid it out to you. But believe me, God got to have an understanding of Solomon. You don't think he got an understanding of you? You wondering why some of your blessings not coming through? God know you're not going to do the right thing with All right, now. Why, why would he give you the blessings of Solomon and you're going to go out there and cast them out in the world to the swine? You, you know, you're hearing about it every day. The world is blessing some people with multi-millions of dollars. In a few years, they broke because they don't have good understanding and they're not tied up in the wisdom of God. Amen? Because right. when everything becomes about you and yours, you got a big problem. Say it. Say it again. It's all about God. It ain't all about me or you. But it's all about God. The right, the right went on to, to talk about a wise man will hear. Now, now you got some people that don't want to hear nothing. That's right. They just got their mindset that they want to go over there right now. I want to do this right now. Don't matter what you say, no matter how you try to convince them, they just want to do that one particular thing. But a wise man will do what? He'll hear. Uh-oh, watch out. My daddy, when I was a boy, he used to, he used to expound on hearing. He said, look, you heard me say it, but that's not hearing. Hearing is when you change your walk in life. When you stop doing what God, what, what God don't want you to do and do what God wants you to do. Then you have heard God. But as long as you talk about, I heard the word, I went to church today and I sat there all day. I heard the word. Go back home, see the hating on your husband, hating on your wife, hating on your friend. Trying to figure out what, how you can do whatever you want to do in life. You ain't heard nothing, my brothers and my sisters. All right, now. And you're not considered wise. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. In other words, you don't, you don't feel like you're so fat that you got all you need. Amen? <laughs> a wise man will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding will obtain Unto wise counsel. Yes, he will. Somebody telling you what's right, and you just rebelling against it, rebelling against it, because you may not like the person that's saying it. Amen. Then I just don't want to hear that from you right now. Maybe if it was somebody else. The Muslim guy told me, say, you can talk to my daughter, but I can't talk to her. Because you know why? She's rebelling on her daddy right now. You can go in there as a stranger and tell them they're wrong and they, they, they'll hold their head down. Well, Daddy, you just don't want me to have no fun. You just don't want me to enjoy my life. My life. <laughs> but a stranger can walk in there and tell you, and you say, yeah, yeah, I, I see. Yeah, I understand. But the one that loves you the most, watch this now. Nobody loves you any more than God loves you. And you walk around every day of your life not attaining to his wisdom, not applying his understanding to whatever, not, not look, whatever, everything that you do, everything that you think, everything that you say should have God's wisdom applied to it. You might slip up, but when somebody pointed out to you, stop! Stop! Just stop! When God Word is pointed out to you. Don't just be bullish. A wise man will hear. He'll hear. And when you understand, when you understand something, then you can do what? Help somebody else. All right, now. The Bible says to understand a proverb is to know the interpretation. I mean, you can help somebody else. You can guide somebody else. But if you're wrong, how you going to guide somebody else right? I don't care if it's your baby. Your baby is watching what you do over a hundred times of what you say. He said that to understand a proverb and the interpretation, 
the word of the wise and their dark sayings. My mama used to say it like this here. This, this, this was a dark saying to me when I was a little boy because I never did get the understanding of it. She said, you can lead a horse to water, you but you drink. can't make him drink. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. When I, when I became a man, I, I started out there and I looked at Job. How long Job preached? 120 years, the word of God, to the people. It's going to rain. But he, he couldn't make them drink, couldn't make them accept it, amen? No, no. No, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't open them up and pour it off into them. Mm -hmm. He just couldn't do that. But he stood in the neighborhood 120 years and preached the word of God. And the people ignored him 120 years. That's why I don't feel bad when I tell folk what's right and they ignore me and go around acting like you some kind of stupid fool or something. It don't bother me one bit. I just keep on and keep on preaching the word of God. No, I did for 120 years. God bless me. I lived in 120 years. Amen. 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 That's only preaching the word of God 120 years. But when you do, when you have this understanding about you. That God is who he is, irregardless to what anybody say, what anybody do. Look at, look at your, your brother and the, the prophets that came before you. They killed them. They beat them. They did all kind of stuff to them. But now I don't want nobody to do nothing to me. I put my religion down to stop you from doing something to me. We got fences set up. We talk, we mad at Donald Trump because he talking about building a wall. Don't worry about Donald Trump wall on the southern border. Worry about them walls you got in your heart towards your brothers and your sisters. Them, those are the walls that, that need to concern you most of all. That you won't receive the love of God for your brother or your sister because they don't just, they don't just please me right now. A wise man will hear, and he'll, he'll understand. The fear of the Lord is the beginning. Now, 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 watch, watch, watch this now. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Oh, but we don't fear God. No, we pace him up, polish him up, print him up. Oh, he's loving. He's kind. He's so sweet. He's oh, God is a good God, and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. He's a good God. That same God, that same God that loves you so much has a calamity that you cannot escape. You can't get around him, over him, or under him. That same God. But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Where's your fear for the Lord? I need you to answer me. But as this lesson goes forth, as this, go, as this sermon goes forth tonight, you need to rationalize in yourself whether or not you have the fear of God in you. In you. Because it is the beginning of wisdom. Amen? Amen. To be able to accept God for who he is and what he's doing. It is the beginning of of knowledge. But fools, watch out. I didn't say it. Cable didn't call nobody no fool. Say so. But I'm just reading the scripture like it say. The scripture says it, amen. And I can't erase it out. Not one tilt or one jot of God's word is gonna fail because heaven and earth is gonna pass away before God's word pass away. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. In other words, he, he, watch this. We see people so closely that we miss the words from their heart. We know that there's, that, that there's John. We know that there's Jeff. We know that there's Sue. We know that there's Mary. And we don't, we don't want to hear that. You know what they said about Jesus. Isn't that Joseph's son? Mm -hmm. You know, but we get so focused. You ever heard the phrase, look, can't see the forest for the trees? Mm -hmm. You're looking at some individual and missing the word of God. Say that, Doc. Say that. You, you, you have saw a personality that has been bigger to you than the word of 
God is. But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instructions. There's a reason for this tonight. Amen? Mm -hmm. There's a reason why. Because we need to check ourselves. Say so. Amen. It's check and balance on everything that you do, everywhere you go, there's check and there's balances. If you get $100 and you spend $100, you don't have no checks and balances. You a fool. And I said that myself. If you can't retain nothing that God has blessed you with, you 40, 50, 60 years old and have, don't have a piece of land, don't have a piece of wood, don't have a piece of tie, a piece of fender off a car, nothing to show what you did in 40 years, you have nothing absolutely to show for it, what, what is, where is your wisdom? A uh, 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 bomb on the back got a pack, backpack or something. Some of them give them a dog have something to show for what they're doing in life. But when we find ourselves not hearing, Solomon said to his son, My son, hear the instructions of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. These are the people that should care the most about you in life. <laughs> Now, you have to be wise enough because I know some folks that have some ill intentions in life. Some of my mothers and fathers, amen? But normally on the norm, on the spiritual norm, your mother and your father is going to care more for you. Here. That's what he's saying here. My son, here. Because if you hear them, it's going to save a lot of pitfalls in your life. The writers call it ointments of grace unto thy head and chain about thy neck. In other words, what? If you got a chain about your neck, you can only go so far. Amen? Amen. Huh? The, the, the wisdom and understanding that your mother and father has passed along to you ought to stop you from doing something. I got friends I grew up with, played with, in the dirt rain, in the grass with. They have done some bodacious stuff that I took and ran the other way because I knew it was the wrong direction to go. Say that now. Say I ain't that. saying I've been all that good, all that, all that in a bag of nuts. But I do know when time comes, I go, oh, they across the line now, y'all. Amen. But it's because you, you can hear. But when you can't hear, you don't listen at nothing that nobody tell you. Whether it's your mother, your father, your wife, your husband, your sister, your brother, I don't want to hear nothing they got to say. But, but the, the writer is concerned. He is concerned. Now look, you, your buddy will call you and say, hey, we're going out tonight, we're going to get all the girls in town, but you're going to put your best clothes on. Now look, you know what that is, right? He, he, try to, he enticing you to sin, to do what's wrong. But you're going to put your best thing on, you're going to fill your car with gas, you're going to make sure all the tires add up, got all that, y'all going to burn the town up tonight. Um, you know, this, this is just typical, you know, may not be like that no more, because I got old now, I don't know what's going on out there. Yeah, burn it up. But, 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 then you burn it up then, but the writer seen it four times. He said, my son, your sinners entice me. Consent thou not. Don't go along with it. Don't you follow with it. Now, now look, you believe, you, you follow the believe of Jesus Christ. Don't tell me somebody ain't trying to call you and tell you to go in another direction. Try to pressure you over this way and over that way. Don't go. If sinners entice me, do not consent. In other words, don't go along with it. Stand up for what you believe in. Entice them a little bit. If they enticing you to go to the club, Amen. say, baby, I'm going to church on New Year's night. You know, there's some folk getting together, they blowing home, shooting off fire, drinking wine, beer, and whiskey, having a good time right now at this moment. Mm -hmm. But you you chose to be here, Amen. Amen. 
It, it, it ain't nothing like the man that, that, that took his wife to church on New Year night. And she said, I, uh, I got a call. I got to go run see about something. But she come back smelling that wine. She had to have both sides of the life. Amen. She didn't come back to church because she went out there and drank enough wine. But when he got home, he said, Happy New Year, baby. And kissed her. He got a big old dose of wine in his mouth. If sinners entice you, don't consent. He, Asaph in the seventy third Psalm, what did he say? He said, look, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, there's some folks out there don't have right on their mind that got everything that you're looking for. Amen. Everything that you want more and besides. But he said, look, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, I don't want that stuff too. He said, my feet had done not slip. I had well not gone. But look, he had some wisdom and understanding under his belt. He said, look, when I went into the sanctuary of the Lord, then I saw what the end of those things were. You ain't never heard about nobody getting to heaven from a juke joint. All right, now. Huh? From the end of a joint. Amen. <laughs> you, ain't never, you ain't never heard nobody smoking no joint. Talking about this is going to take me to heaven. Uh, uh, <laughs> you, you ain't heard that? You ain't never heard that? I'm sitting up my temple. Oh my God. <laughs> no, they're trying to get their temples while they're here. Trying to get their birds while they're here, amen? amen? But when sinners entice you, do not consent. Just don't do it. Amen. Just don't do it. That, 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 I'm not going to tell you to make no New Year's resolution. Amen. You don't need no New Year's resolution. Amen. You need a self-resolution. Okay. <laughs> you need to, your heart need to be changed. Your mind need to be changed. Jeez. That you can follow the word of God with understanding and wisdom. Because they're going to come to you. And they're going to entice you. They're going to tell you, come and let's go. Let us do all the good things. I heard a young lady gave a testimony the other day. Say she ain't been and we're not going, but she just knows some of the stuff she used to do and she wanted to do just a little bit of it. And they said, come and go. Say, I don't want to go down there. But they, when they got down there, say, all stuff broke loose. So when, when, when you entice to do something that you're not supposed to be doing, just don't do it. And they're probably going to talk about you. You're probably going to look bad in their eyesight. They're probably going to turn their backs on you. But do not consent to something that you know in your heart is not right to do. Where God has no pleasure. Amen? Amen. Amen. They're going to tell you that about all the good things that they're going to do in life. They're going to tell you, come on, just be with us. We're best friends. We're good buddies. They'll tell you, come on, go with them. Let's go with them. Very rarely, somebody at your, your job or your friends going to beg you to go to church with them. Please, come on, go. Please, 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 come on, go. Just listen at the word of God. Oh, it's going to be moral to your bones. Come on, listen at the word of God. But child, when they start talking about listening, I, they got some, some saints out there now. I don't even know, don't know their name. But when they start talking about them, they're going to beg you, please. They're going to show you where there ain't no harm. Ain't no harm. Hey, just, you know, just a little bit, just a little bit. Just a little bit, not, you, know, you know, just a little bit. Y'all heard that before just a little bit? I don't go all the time. I'm just going just this one time. I'm just going to do it just this one time. Sometimes people get you to commit fornication and adultery by telling you just a little bit. Just this one time. We ain't going to go. let it go after that. Huh? Just, just come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Just one, don't do it just one time. Just, one time ain't going to hurt nothing. 
True. I told y'all what my dad told me about committing fornication. You know what I, 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 I said, oh, no, Lord, have mercy. He said, well, I don't do it. He got old. He's over 70 years old then. He don't even do nothing wrong that much. Every now and then he might do this, you know. Oh, yeah, you know, every now and then. But if, 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 if every now and then, put you at odds with God. Amen. And the Bible says, anyway, if you can't contain yourself, what you're going to do? Matter. But I'm too bold basic. I don't want nobody to tell. I ain't got the answer to nobody. But if you can't contain yourself, you can't keep yourself from, from the ways of the world, then it is better for you to marry and the right to put it back there and say, oh, oh burn. He, he, he didn't make no bones about it. That was Paul over in Corinthians. It is better for you to marry than for you to burn. Mm -hmm. So don't let nobody entice you in and pull you down that road that men have been going down since the beginning of time. You ain't nothing new. You just a new one on the block. And he's enticing you and begging you to come into his realm. Amen? We don't get ready to shut it down, but I ain't ready to shut it down. This, this, this got good to me. <laughs> All right. All right. But when, when you start putting together, don't let the evil be the side that you take. Amen? Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. Because God has made you to be safe, if you just stay in the safety. The old folks used to say the ark of safety. Amen. Mm -hmm. Stay in the ark of safety. Stay in the word of God. Amen. Stay in the will of God. That's your ark of safety. That's mm -hmm. Jesus went all the way to the cross for you to have an ark of safety. Say so. He went out there and suffered and died on Calvary for you to have an ark of safety. Amen. 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 Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Don't let those just be words from your mouth. Apply it to your life. That's what Jesus did. He applied it. And when he was finished, when it was over, said and done, he is sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and I right now, because he did what God asked him to do. Now it's our turn to do the will of God. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you. Amen.